beer is Snake Dog IPA from Flying Dog Brewery in Frederick, Maryland. Check it out, guys. They're awesome, great IPA. And remember, please drink responsibly. Hey, kids, welcome to Beer and Bolters. Little tutorial in regards to scenery building to make your game experience a little bit better. Uh, my name is Adam. Just to give you guys some background information in regards to my game experience. Been playing Warhammer 40K since Road Trader days back in the early 90s when I was a young lad. Uh, played through every edition and currently playing 7th edition. Ran a game store where I was the head games workshop trainer, painter, modeler extraordinaire. And uh, we're sitting here in a city right now. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about modeling terrain and setting up terrain for the best case scenarios for a 7th edition game so you guys can enjoy your game the most, make it the most realistic, and you know just have an overall great experience. So you guys see our uh, city set up here, and uh, we're talking about terrain amounts uh, coming into 7th edition and getting away from some earlier editions uh, problems with terrain and how that's changed over time, but terrain itself hasn't caught up to the game, which causes us some problems. And today we're gonna be talking about true line of sight, and we're gonna have a little uh, Blood Raven here and a uh, Lone Wolf, and they're gonna duke it out here. So I've been playing every edition of the game, and it does present some problems because you can confuse uh, some changes in rules. Of course, seventh edition, we just had that after two years of sixth edition, and there's some changes there. Uh, but more often, I see people basically not realizing that the game through these editions does change dramatically and you have to look at every aspect of the game and today we're going to be talking about line of sight so back in the good old days of fourth edition we had this mysterious stuff called area terrain and let me throw a piece of area terrain on there right there boom there we go and here are our gentlemen right there so back in the day we did not really have true line of sight uh, different units would block line of sight even though the model's eye can uh, actually draw a line of sight to the opponent. And you know, this can be explained in different ways, ducking and crouching down, you know, between a bulkhead or something like that. And that in the game, since the models were, or the characters were actually moving, they weren't as static as we have in a three-dimensional free range tabletop board game. Uh, but what this meant is, for a situation like this, we have a piece of area terrain, and uh, both models are not necessarily inside the area terrain. Uh, and back in the day of fourth edition, even though we can see that our guy right here could see him, if this was more than six inches in length, he would not have a chance to shoot at that. That, that model would be out of his line of sight. Even though technically he was in his line of sight, uh, it'd be out of his line of sight. So what does that mean for seventh edition? Well, Adam, what does that have to do anything? Well, the terrain use has not changed as well as it should. Looking at the game realistically and trying to balance it out, it means that we have to change the way we think about terrain. And how that is done, you know, back in the day, uh, we used to put about 25% of uh, the table would be completely covered with terrain. Pile it all in, 25% of the table. Back in the day, we, we did a lot of eight foot by four foot boards and made sure that was all there. And then you guys take time, each opponent takes time to set up terrain and you know, put it position in different sides before they figure out which side they are going on. Let's look at the amount or articles of scenery that we have on the table right now. So we're playing on a six by four. This is one of the uh, frontline games uh, table war mats. I think they're called the fat mats now. Uh, this was a Kickstarter a couple, a couple uh, months ago. Awesome product. I'll do a separate review on this one if you guys are interested. But let's look at the volume of terrain. As you guys can see right now, a lot of terrain on this board. This is a little heavy for the buildings. Uh, this would be a board that, you know, it's probably take somebody a long time to collect the build. Uh, but if you look at the layout of everything, not only is it in a logical city type feel, uh, you have a plethora of different types of buildings, some trees added in there, some battlefield debris, including one of the crashed spaceships and some craters, some uh, tree markers, like I said before. And you also have a lot of different height. So you have one, two, three stories here. This is the same about three stories. You have a one story, three stories, three stories, a two-story building. So a lot of uh, dynamic height changes can happen in the game as well. You know, one primary lane of fire right going through here, which you'd have to, you know, be careful of. That'd probably be the, the biggest kill zone. That's really only for a unit here and a unit located there, which probably wouldn't happen. Uh, everything else from every angle is very short 
and it's going to force you to maneuver a lot more to get to your objectives. Now, if you're playing a, it's kind of a sit on objective t style game, you know, it might uh, hold some good cover for you just to kind of wait for your enemy to get, get you. And that's the fun of it is you're always going to be switching up the kind of style games you're playing. What has happened though, and I've seen a lot, especially in the tournament scene, is we have continued to make fourth edition terrain. So we might get, you know, a couple blasted ships and uh, some uh, craters in there and maybe a couple ruins positioned in a certain way. And uh, that'll be our terrain. And of course, you know, we can get cover saves and stuff like that from our terrain, but it's not really blocking true line of sight. It really gives the unfair advantage and an unrealistic advantage to more shooty based armies or armies that rely more on, you know, their uh, distance shooting and less on the hand-to-hand -hand combat. And regardless of what army you play, I mean, yes, no game is perfectly balanced, but any army should be able to be beat any other army. And if you're able to sit back and fire through no block line of sight across the table to an army that is foot slogging it through, who doesn't have any guns and hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons, well, that's gonna, you know, put them in a position of disadvantage, and you're not really gonna have that enjoyable game. Getting a model's eye view, you can see how dynamic this setup is here, which would make for an awesome game. And unfortunately, what has happened is, you know, tournaments, organizers, you know, by no probably fault of their own, they recycle terrain and, and terrain that was perfectly acceptable for a fourth edition rule set gets recycled and reused. It's also one of the biggest expense on these events. So you're trying to limit the amount of terrain that has to be produced to cover, you know, 50 or 60 tables, which is understandably. So what that happens is people start to emulate that what they see in the more competitive world and even some of these more popular uh, websites that i've seen you get on there and there's a sparse amount of uh, terrain that is not blocking any line of sight whatsoever on the table and that's just no fun for anybody so what i say to you guys is start thinking about blocking true line of sight with a a good amount of terrain so there's no real place that you can get on the board and have lanes of fire open everywhere it's gonna make the game more interesting, it's gonna be more challenging, the battles are gonna be fiercer, and there's a lot more maneuvering that's gonna happen. And just give you guys kind of a, a look-see here. And as you guys can see, we're blocking a good amount of line of sight from the perspective of the models. We do have windows, so when we're modeling those, I might wanna put some boards up in some of those windows so I can block line of sight for some of those guys. Uh, we have buildings like this that don't have doors open where models and squads can completely be blocked line of sight. Uh, and that means that this guy right here is not going to be targeting him with that, you know, special bolter. And uh, just making the game more enjoyable, balancing out the shooty aspect of the armies with the hand-to-hand -hand combat aspect of the armies. Of course, since Overwatch has been initiated in the 6th edition, it's, uh, it's been an interesting uh, way to kind of tone down some of the assault-based armies. And it's all about balance, guys. So... Elements like this bridge are going to add a dynamic feel as well. Now, this bridge is a work in progress, but as you can see, we have the roadway that goes underneath. And we've actually modeled that in game turns where only certain tanks are allowed to drive underneath that. If they can't fit underneath the bridge, well, then they can't go underneath of it. It's impassable to them, but they can still shoot through it as they have a line of sight. So it adds some interesting effects. We're going to move this around. Uh, this is a large piece of scenery, but it's definitely going to block line of sight across the table, especially if it's in the middle. It's going to really even the odds in regards to balancing the hand-to-hand -hand versus the shooting. If we're at a higher position, we are, of course, going to have a better field of vision like you would in the real world. You have the high ground, it puts you in a position of advantage. And the individual down here at a position of disadvantage, not gonna have as much line of sight uh, options if somebody were to move back here a little bit. You know, if you were going to do like something like this, of course, now we don't have line of sight uh, up there, but even though the individuals are relatively close. So just uh, some ideas, guys, you know, think about that when you're putting terrain on your boards. And uh, let me know what you think. Leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook at Beer and Bolters. Make sure you guys like us and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also check out the Beer and Bolters podcast where we talk about everything from hobbying to 40K fluff to whatever else. And uh, have a great time. So, hey, I'm Adam again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, subscribing. And uh, we'll see you next time.